There have been whispers around the Cook's Country Kitchen about these potatoes that Brian's been messing around with called torn and fried, and I'm dying to try them. They are really good potatoes. Now, what are torn and fried <laughs> potatoes? We came up with this concept when we were playing around in the kitchen. We, Morgan and I were trying to come up with potato side dishes, and she mentioned the words torn and fried. I said, what is that? She said, I don't know. I said, let's invent it. <laughs> so we took raw potatoes, and we were smashing them with a skillet and trying to deep fry those. One thing led to another. And here, we're going to show you what they are. All right, so you invented a new recipe called torn and fried potatoes. I think we did, yeah. Oh, sweet. <laughs> All right, so it starts with russets. Right, so we have two and a half pounds of russet potatoes here. And these have been scrubbed to remove any excess dirt because we are going to eat the skins. Mm. Okay. So we're going to bake these off. But before we throw them in the oven, we want to prick them about six times, keep them from exploding in the oven. This recipe is super simple, by the way. <laughs> this has become one of my Thanksgiving traditions now. All right, so now we're gonna throw these into a 400 degree oven and bake them until they're nice and tender. It takes about an hour and 20 minutes. Okay. Okay, so while those potatoes are baking, we're going to make an aioli. Mm. Dunk those crispy little Yum. things into. It's a very Spanish thing to serve an aioli with fried potatoes. Right, and so we're gonna make ours from scratch. All right, so we're going to combine one whole egg, four teaspoons of lemon juice, one and a half teaspoons of Dijon mustard, one minced garlic clove. And you want to mince the garlic before it goes into the food processor. A lot of people think you can just throw in the whole clove, but it'll actually just bounce around in there with all the other ingredients. So three quarters of a teaspoon of table salt, a quarter teaspoon of sugar, and just a pinch of cayenne pepper. Okay, and we're just going to process this for a few seconds to get everything blended. Okay, so now the trick with mayonnaise is that you need to add the oil very slowly so the emulsion catches. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the food processor helps you out in a way. It has this little tiny hole in the bottom of this feed tube, <laughs> and that creates a little steady stream. So we'll add the oil to that. We have one and a half cups of vegetable oil. Again, add it very slowly until the emulsion catches. Then we can start adding it a little bit more quickly. Okay, it's been about two minutes, and we can scrape down the side of the food processor. That looks beautiful. Yeah, thanks. It worked. <laughs> And we're going to transfer it to a bowl. It's like textbook mayonnaise right there. <laughs> it is textbook mayonnaise right there. Now we're going to whisk in two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. And the reason why we don't add it in the machine is because the aggressive nature of the food processor can sometimes make the olive oil bitter. Mm -hmm. So I've done that, actually. And it does turn bitter within a second of being yeah. in the food processor. And that's good to go. OK, Julia, it's been an hour and 20 minutes, and we can test our potatoes. You want to? See that they have no resistance when you jab them with a paring knife. Oh, those are done. Those are perfect. Okay, so now we want to let these potatoes cool to room temperature, and it takes a couple hours. And then we want to refrigerate them for at least three hours. Wow, so you really have to do this well ahead of time. Yeah, but it's great because it's a built-in make-ahead. Like, I make these for Thanksgiving now, so I always bake the potatoes the day ahead of time. All right, Julia, the potatoes are cold, and so now we're ready to start tearing. <laughs> you ready to tear? You want, you is want... I want to see officially how you tear. Okay. So yeah, this is very technical. You want to tear these into approximate one and a half inch pieces. So, <laughs> boom, just like that. <laughs> Wait, really, that's it? Yeah. There's no real right or wrong here, because even <laughs> the small pieces get extra crispy. Ooh. The bigger pieces are creamy. I see a kitchen task for little hands. Yeah, absolutely. At the holidays, I definitely have my kids jump in and help out with this. Yeah, well, it's fun. And the great thing about this, rather than, say, cutting this with a knife, mm -hmm. creating straight, clean edges, we're creating a lot of little nooks and crannies so you get extra crispiness. All right, so now we're going to fry these. We have a quart of vegetable oil here that we've been heating up over medium-high heat. It's actually not a lot of oil if you look at all the potatoes. We're looking for 375 degrees. That's perfect. 375 is a relatively high starting temperature for mm -hmm. frying, but once we add two and a half pounds of cold potatoes to it, the oil temperature is going to drop. You're going to add them all? All at once, yep. This really is your recipe. It has you all over it. There's almost no prep, there's no batch cooking, and it's deep fried. Right. Yeah, it's my signature <laughs> laziness, yeah. <laughs> laziness in the kitchen. And the great thing about this, so we're using vegetable oil here today, but at the holidays, I use duck fat. Of course you do. <laughs> Sometimes I use lard because I'm just crazy. And Ooh, but these be potatoes good. work with anything. So now, because that oil temperature drops so dramatically when you add all those potatoes, we're going to turn the heat up to high. This is going to go until the potatoes are nice and golden brown. It takes anywhere between 13 and 15 minutes. 
We'll give them the occasional stir to make sure they don't stick to the bottom. All right, so you just cranked that heat right up to high. Yep. All right, Julia, it's been about 15 minutes, and you can see these potatoes are looking absolutely golden brown and gorgeous. They are beautiful. I actually really like their rustic look. Yeah. Rustic on purpose is what I like to say. <laughs> it's lazy chic, and I might get you in there. <laughs> Lazy chic. Okay, so we'll just put these onto our paper towel lined sheet here. Ooh, and those potato skins that are fried. This is a recipe for everybody who loves crispy French fries. Potato skins. Mm -hmm. So this is this covers both those camps. Okay, now we can season these potatoes with a teaspoon of kosher salt. Whenever you're deep frying, you always want to season as soon as the food comes out of the deep fryer. Yep. Okay, so now we can just transfer our potatoes to a platter. Oh. This is the, <laughs> the fanciest part of the oh. recipe. You can hear how crisp they are. No wonder I never got to taste them before. They were devoured before I even got there. Let me uh, let me load you down here. Now I want to make sure you get plenty of skin because the skin is actually the best part. Oh yeah. Now we also have Cajun seasoning here, an herb de Provence, and a pakora masala. Now you can find the recipes for all these on the website. I'm gonna I'm gonna have a little fun with all of them. Oh, that's that's few more fun than I was planning you, to have few today. You and you, yeah. What, 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 is, what, what do you call this? <laughs> right. Sorry, it's a brine recipe. <laughs> I love that almost no prep served with mayonnaise. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's like a combination of really good potato chips and really good french fries. Yeah. You usually have to jump through all kinds of hoops to get potatoes mm -hmm. to fry up this crispy. I also really like these seasonings that you can sprinkle mm -hmm. on top. They really change the flavor. Brian, these potatoes are terrific. A great invention. Thank you so much. So if you want to try Brian's all new torn and fried potatoes, bake russet potatoes until they are fully tender. Let the potatoes cool completely before breaking them apart. And crank the heat on the stove after adding the potatoes to the pot. From Cook's Country, an incredible recipe for torn and fried potatoes. Thanks for watching Cook's Country from America's Test Kitchen. So what'd you think? Leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or just say hi. Now you can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. Alligator. <laughs>